Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Fountain Kayak, and in this video I'm going to take you on a tour of the construction details that are common to all my kayaks. Now, I'm not going to talk about the individual kayak designs in this video, so if you're interested in the shaping and the performance of the different boats that we offer, make sure you check out the separate videos on those subjects. Now, if you're new here, just a little bit of background about me. I've been a full-time skin-on-frame boat builder for almost 20 years, and between myself and my students, we've probably put just a little bit over 2,000 boats on the water. And what that's given me from a professional perspective is not just a great opportunity to understand kayak design as it relates to skin-on-frame boats, but also to understand the durability and longevity characteristics of framing it and skinning it in different ways. Now, just as a general construction philosophy, the way that I like to build things is I'll start out by building them very light, and then I'll take them out and use them in real world conditions and watch how they wear over time. Because what you often find out is that some things that you thought were framed much too lightly are just fine and last a very long time, and there's just key points that fail before the rest of the boat. So being able to build a lot of these over a long period of time, we can identify the places that need to be reinforced, which lets us keep the boats as light as possible, but bring the entire package up to an equivalent durability so the whole boat lasts as long as it can. Now, the general durability to weight balance that I like to end up with is something that's between about 25 to 35 pounds, depending on which kayak you're building, with a skin that's gonna last about 5,000 miles before it needs to be reskinned, and a frame that's gonna last at least twice that long. Now, keep in mind that one of the coolest things about Skin on Frame is that it's super easy to customize. So if you're someone with physical limitations or injuries, you can build these even lighter than that and just take a minor hit in terms of the durability and the longevity. Or if you're someone that's going on very long expeditions or is extremely hard on these boats, you can even put heavier skins on or frame them much more heavily and they're gonna be even more durable over time. So for the purposes of our demonstration here today, I've got two of the same kayak here. One is completely skinned and it's outfitted, and the other one is just a bare frame. Both of these are the exact same boat. It's my F1 kayak, which is our most popular kayak design. And what I'm gonna do here is just walk you through the framework and talk about different materials and different framing choices and why I make those choices. And then we'll switch over to this boat here and I'll talk about the skin and the coating. And then I'll take you on a tour of the outfitting and talk a little bit about the customization that you can do to the individual boats as well. So starting out with the longitudinal members in the framework here, I like to make these out of red cedar for one very simple reason. It's nice and lightweight. Now, red cedar is also beautiful and rot resistant, but you don't really see a frame once it's covered with the skin, and rot is rarely an issue in skin boats. So really what I get out of this red cedar is just a boat that's nice and light, but still has a reasonable amount of strength, at least for the parts that I use it for. Now, I don't make every single piece out of red cedar because there are places where that is not gonna be strong enough, but for the gunnels, the stringers, the keel, the stems, the deck ridge, and these curved laminated deck beams here, all this is red cedar. Now, before we move on, I just wanna mention that if you don't have access to red cedar, you can really build these boats out of any long, clear softwood. It just usually ends up being a little bit heavier if you're using something like pine or fir or something like that. Now, coming down underneath the frame here for a second, I just wanna point out a small detail that makes a big difference in the lifespan of your skin, and that's how much the outside of the stringers and the keel get rounded over. Now, it seems like you might wanna round these over a lot to keep these edges from wearing through, but in reality, if there's too much rounding on here, it will allow any small pebbles that get inside of your kayak to crawl around and get stuck between the outside of the stringer and the skin. And that creates a wear point that can wear through your skin really quickly. So what I've learned over the years is just to round these a little bit to keep those pebbles from getting down in there. Now, moving a little bit further back in the frame here, this area at the back of the cockpit is one place where I don't use red cedar because oftentimes you'll end up sitting here when you're getting in and out of the kayak. And also this is a pretty high stress area during rescues. So in the case of this particular kayak, I made this deck beam out of yellow cedar, although it could just as easily be fir or spruce. And then I always make these deck stringers out of Eastern ash. Now, at least for my modern kayaks, this is a location that can be customized one of the things you can do if you're doing a lot of very long camping expeditions is just very slightly arch this back deck. It gives you a little bit more room to get your gear in and out back here. I typically don't do it for my own boats because I'm not usually camping for more than a week and I like the functionality of this flat back deck here. 
Now, coming back to the stern of the kayak here, I've got another example of how you can customize the frame. What I've done here is I've just carefully fitted this little block in place, pegged it from the sides, and drilled a hole in the top. And what this is for is once I get the skin on, I can cut this out and I can drop this drain plug right in here. Now, I usually don't put drain plugs on my own kayaks, but I wanted a block back here so I could mount a camera in this location. And I figured, as long as I have the block, might as well put a drain plug back here as well. Now, moving a little bit further down into the frame here, the ribs that you're looking at are made out of Oregon white oak. And there's a bunch of different woods that you can potentially steam bend your kayak ribs out of. But the reason that I like white oak the best is because it's extremely strong, it's very rot resistant, but it's also very easy to bend into complex shapes. Now, the dimensioning of these ribs is actually fairly critical. It's very common to see people making the ribs a quarter inch thick because it's very easy to fit them into quarter inch mortises. But what I found over the years is that if I made these a quarter inch thick, the frame started to collapse after a few years. And so by adding just a 64th of an inch of thickness to these ribs, it really helps to resist the frame collapse. Although if you go up to 930 seconds, that can actually make it hard to make the shapes that you're looking for. So I've got this spec a little bit different in all of my different kayaks, depending on the size. Now, a reason that I focused in on this area specifically is I wanted you to notice that these ribs are not on an even spacing in the cockpit. Because another thing that I've found is that if this particular rib is a little bit further back, it bites into your sciatic nerve while you're paddling and it makes your legs go to sleep. And so by shifting this forward, it really helps to increase the paddler comfort. Now, as long as I'm down in here, I wanna point out that the stringers are latched to the ribs with flat artificial sinew. And what this is, is a flat waxed polyester. And the reason that I prefer it to the twisted stuff is because it doesn't leave bumps on the outside of the stringer underneath the skin. And believe it or not, that can actually create a wear point on the skin. So by using the flat stuff, not only does it give a smoother hull, but it ends up making the skin last a little bit longer. Now, a lot of people are surprised that I use continuous lashings as opposed to individual ones here because they think that these could potentially break. But the reality is because the skin is glued to the outside of the stringer, these are individually isolated from each other. So even if you did break one of these, which rarely, rarely happens, it doesn't end up creating a problem for any other ones. Now, coming back up on deck here, you'll notice that most of the frame is held together either with lashings of that same artificial sinew or with wooden pegs. And the reason we do it this way is because even though skin boats don't flex very much, they flex with tremendous force. So by having joints that can move just a little bit, it really helps to dissipate those forces so we can build a boat with very light framing members that still remains very strong. And if you're interested in learning more about that, definitely check out my video on skin boat durability because you'll really be surprised by what kinds of impacts some of these things are able to survive. Now, there's some people that will tell you that the traditional Inuit boats didn't use metal fasteners, and that was true for most of history, but they didn't necessarily have a problem with it. As soon as they had contact with Europeans from the 1600s onward, we saw a lot of nails and different metal fasteners in the boats, although they usually would have been able to flex just a little bit, just the same way as these traditional joints here. The reason that I like using lashings and pegs as opposed to metal isn't for traditional or non-traditional reasons. It's just because it's a lot easier to do. And also it's a lot easier to back up if you make a mistake. Now, one place that I actually do use metal fasteners, at least on my modern kayaks, is installing these adjustable plastic foot brace tracks. These guys are held in with four really heavy stainless steel screws. And the reason that's important is because if you accidentally pitch pull your kayak in the surf, all your body weight's gonna come down on your foot braces, so it's important that these stay firmly attached. Now, that's probably not gonna be a concern for most people, but I always try to design for the most extreme circumstance. Now, another thing I did to customize this particular kayak is I made this deck stringer a little bit wider so I can mount the mast step for a kayak sail. And these kayaks are compatible with a couple different commercially available kayak sails, and we're also working on our own design so you can build it yourself. All right, so last thing I wanna talk about before we get into talking about the skin and the outfitting is these steam bent cockpit combings. And learning how to make these really well was probably my biggest challenge when I got into building skin boats because not only did the rounded traditional Inuit cockpits not have the shape that I wanted for my more modern designs, but they also didn't have a very positive spray skirt attachment. And that wasn't a problem for traditional paddlers who were able to actually tie their seal skin jackets to the outside of the combing. But 
For modern paddlers, where we do need a very tight seal, but we also need to be able to do a wet exit, we really need to get a more modern lip onto this combing. And that actually turned out to be kind of hard to do. So there was a lot of trial and error and a lot of frustration, but ultimately I was able to come up with a system that not only let me get the shape I was looking for, but also let me get a really positive lip. Now, focusing in on the details here for a minute, what you're looking at is an inner combing ring that's made out of Oregon white oak, which is the same wood that we use for our ribs. And then on the outside, I either have one or two layers to form the lip. Now, my single half inch layer is plenty strong enough to hold your spray skirt in the surf or if you're doing a bunch of rolling. The only time that I go up to a double layer is if I want to pair a sea sock and my spray skirt at the same time. Now, personally, I'm not a very big fan of sea socks, but I like to have that option for people who want to use one. Now, you'll notice that the lip here is held on with bronze ring nails. And this is one of the only other places in the kayak where I use metal fasteners. The reason that I like the bronze ring nails is not only do they hold the lip on really tightly, but they don't take away as much wood as if you drilled and then pounded a peg in here. Now, the reason that we can't glue this on is because when we steam bend this, the white oak still has a very high moisture content. And so as it dried, it would break whatever glue joint that you made there. Now, as far as the overall shaping of the combing goes, for my Inuit kayaks, like my traditional Greenland kayaks, I still build much smaller and more rounded cockpit combings to match the originals. But for my modern sea kayaks here, I try to mimic the keyhole shape that you find in most modern kayaks, where you've got good knee purchase on either side of the combing so you can control the boat very well, but also you can lift your legs in and out a lot more easily. Now, for the smaller rounded combings, those are actually pretty easy to build, and oftentimes my students will build those themselves. For the more elaborate keyhole shaped here, sometimes students will choose to build those, other times they'll just purchase one from me, and oftentimes that decision is really made on the availability of the wood that you need to make this tight bend up here. So I've got these for sale on my website, and I also have the entire process where I show you how to build these for free in my Skin On Frame Kayak Prep course. And if you want even more detail about the physical measurements, you can find that in my cockpit combing plan set, which you can also find on the website. So anyways, that's pretty much it for the framing details here. Now let's start talking about the finished boat. Actually guys, I just checked the memory card in the camera and it looks like this video is already pushing past 10 minutes. I'm trying to get a little bit better about making my videos not quite so long. So why don't we stop here and then we'll come back in a second video. I'm gonna talk about the skin, the deck rigging, the outfitting, everything that we haven't covered so far. I'll see you in the next video.